Hey everybody, Miss Need here. Happy May the 4th be with you. Got my Leia buns in for today. Today we're gonna work on topic one, lesson five, which is our word problem lesson. So our learning target says, I can solve word problems involving equivalent fractions. So as you guys can see from the screen, we're gonna start with the brain teaser today. The brain teaser asks us to use four different fraction pieces of three different sizes to make one whole. So this is kind of a review of what we've been doing. If you think about this and you go back, you think about your one whole, and you think about your fraction size pieces, okay? You can start by cutting this in half. So that's your first piece, your one half piece. You could then cut that half in half again. These are each one fourth, because one fourth, one fourth, if I cut this one in half, I could make four. So this would be one fourth, okay? And then I have to use four pieces total. I've only used two. So if I cut this one in half, half of a fourth is an eighth. And I can use two one eighth pieces. I've now used three different pieces or three different fractions, I apologize, and four different pieces. So I've met the brain teaser. You guys could recreate this in a multitude of different ways. No one says you have to start with a half. You could start with a fourth start with an eighth, you could start with a sixteenth. But I like to start larger and go smaller as I keep breaking my pieces down to create those equivalents. So there's your brain teaser. This is gonna go along with what we're doing today because if you think about what we've been working on, we've really been using models to connect our ideas of equivalent fractions. So if I look here at 1 fourth and I look at 3 sixteenths, I can see from the model that 1 fourth is larger. But when I prove why that is, I think about my equivalent fractions and I go to that 1 fourth and I say, okay, I need the same denominator as that sixteenths because I can't compare things that don't have a common denominator. So I say to myself, 1 fourth times what over what would give me a denominator of 16? Move that into the screen so you guys can see a little better. So I say to myself, four times four is 16. Whatever I do to the denominator, I must also do to the numerator because that's the only way that this has a value of one using our identity property. So one times four is four. And I know that four sixteenths is larger than three sixteenths, which is why one fourth is larger than three sixteenths. So that's really what we've been working on, using our equivalents, comparing fractions, making holes. Now today, we're gonna to be looking at um, the idea of problem solving. And what you're looking at on the screen here is you're actually looking at a balanced scale. So this is a balanced scale right here. So if I grab my little pen tool, I'm going to grab a color you guys can see. This is the balance part of my scale right here. This is where it stands. This side of my scale, which I'm going to color purple, has to be balanced in value to this side of my scale. So I want those two sides to be balanced. So one half has to be equivalent to whatever all of these fractions are together. So if we think about this together, we think about what we know about equivalent fractions, we're gonna look right away and say, okay, what's the denominator that I need to be looking at? Oh, right, I need to be looking at a denominator of eight. These have a denominator eight, which means I need an equivalent fraction that has a denominator of what? it's gonna to need to have a denominator of eight. So if I come over here, let me use my board here, a little easier than writing. If I say to myself, one half now has to have a denominator of eight, what am I gonna to do to that one half to give me that two times what? It's gonna give me eight, two times four. Again, whatever I do the denominator, I do to the numerator, one times four is four, so four eighths. So now we have to ensure that the green side of our scale 
also has a value of that much. So we are going to look at one eighth plus what plus two eighths is gonna give us four eighths. Well, there's the easy part for us, right? That part is easy. We know if the denominators are the same, we just add up the numerators. So we've got one eighth plus two eighths, that's the two known parts, plus this n, which is our unknown, and we know it needs to equal four eighths. Well, one plus two is three, and three plus what is four? One, and our denominator has to be an eighth in order to add it. So this unknown number is actually one eighth. And that's what we're looking for today. So once we find those equivalents, which we've been working on, this part of it is really easy, just adding up those fraction parts to get the new equivalent fraction that we found. So as we move on here, erase my screen. We're gonna take a look at another problem together. So we've got our guided practice here. So again, we've got this side of the scale, which I can mark up with a color and say this is my purple side again. There it is, with a denominator of 16. I can mark up this side. This has a denominator of four, which I need to find an equivalent of with a denominator of 16. So I come back to my board here. I'm gonna take my 1 fourth. Oh, I think we've done 1 fourth to 16 before. I think we've done this a couple times now. So 1 fourth times 4 over 4 gives me 4 16 So if I know that it's 4 16 and I look back here, I've got 2 plus one is three, three plus what is gonna give me four? Three plus one, one what? One sixteenth. So if I look here, I've got two sixteenths plus one sixteenth plus an unknown sixteenth. Oh, look at that, I put the N on top of my denominator because really I already know it has to be sixteenths in order to be added. Have to have that common denominator two plus one plus one more makes four. So we've got one sixteenth this time. Okay, moving along again. That now takes you to your practice pages. So I'm gonna erase everything here so I can change my screen. Come down, grab our practice. Here's our practice pages. Our practice pages, we just did the blue. We did number one. You've got numbers two, three, four, and the exit ticket. Again, taking the one side, finding the equivalent fraction, and then it's just adding your numerators once you've found that equivalent fraction. This is actually a pretty easy problem solving for us with as difficult uh, um, types of questions as we've been using in the past. So work really hard on this. Remember I'm here. We can have a Google Meet if you need it. Uh, just let me know though. I'm here for you guys and I'll see you soon. Bye.